In this video we look at the work on solving second order linear differential equations for unit 4 of the WJEC further mathematics specification. The specification says that we should be able to solve equations of the form d2y dx squared plus a dy by dx plus by equals naught where a, b and c are constants. And we also ought to be able to solve equations of the form d2y dx squared plus a dy by dx plus by equals a function of x, where the function of x is either a polynomial, an exponential, or a trigonometric function. And that we should be able to set up and understand the different cases of the auxiliary equation for a differential equation. So let's have a look at the key facts. So first of all for the equation a d2y dx squared plus b dy by dx plus cy equals naught. To solve such an equation we form what is called the auxiliary equation which is simply the quadratic equation with the same coefficients a, b and c. So we solve that equation and then if we have two real distinct roots k1 and k2 to the auxiliary equation then the general solution of the differential equation is y equals ae to the k1x plus be to the k2x. If the auxiliary equation has a repeated root then the differential equation has a general solution y equals e to the kx where k is the repeated root so that's y equals e to the kx times by ax plus b if we have a repeated root of k finally if the auxiliary root equation has complex roots of the form k plus i omega and k minus i omega then the differential equation will have a general solution of the form y equals e to the kx times by a sine omega x plus b cos omega x. When we're solving an equation of the form a d2y dx squared plus b dy by dx plus cy equals f of x, then the first thing we must do is we must find the complementary function or the complementary solution which is the general solution of the equation a d2y dx squared plus b dy by dx plus cy equals naught. In other words we've got to use the techniques shown on the previous slide. The second step we've got to do is we have to find a particular integral or a particular solution which is just any solution that works for our equation a d a d 2 y dx squared plus b d y by dx plus c y equals f of x. Um, now this second step of finding the particular integral basically is a process of inspired guesswork but it's inspired guesswork which is helped by experience and the little table of results that we've just put there ought to take you through the possible cases of what we ought to be trying when we're looking for that particular integral. Once we've found the complementary function and the particular integral then the general solution of the differential equation a d2y dx squared plus b dy by dx plus cy equals f of x is the sum of the particular integral plus the complementary function. So now let's use these methods to solve our first second order differential equation which is 2 d2x dt squared plus 5 dx by dt plus 2x equals 6t plus 5 given the initial conditions that when t equals naught x is equal to 3 and dx by dt is equal to 2. 
So we start by looking for the complementary function. So to find the solution of d2x dt squared plus 5 dx by dt plus 2x equals naught, we set up the auxiliary equation, which is simply the quadratic equation with the same coefficients. So that is 2k squared plus 5k plus 2 equals naught. Solving that quadratic equation gives me k equals minus 2 and k equals minus a half, which means that the complementary function is x equals ae to the minus 2t plus be to the minus a half t. So having found the complementary function, we must now think about finding a particular integral. If we look at the right-hand side of our differential equation, we see that the right-hand side is 6t plus 5. In other words, we have a polynomial on the right-hand side. So the sensible thing might be to look for a solution that's of the form x equals alpha t plus beta. So to look for a similar style of expression as the right hand side. Now if we have x equals alpha t plus beta then dx by dt is alpha and d2x dt squared is 0. So 2 dx by dt squared plus 5 dx by dt plus 2x is going to be 2 times 0 plus 5 times alpha plus 2 times alpha t plus beta which gives me 2 alpha t plus 5 alpha plus 2 beta. And we want that to be exactly the same as 6t plus 5. Now this will be the case if 2 alpha is the same as 6, which means that we need alpha equals 3, and also 5 alpha plus 2 beta needs to equal 5 which means that we need 2 beta to be minus 10 because we know that 5 alpha is equal to 15 so we need beta equals minus 5. So we have x equals alpha t plus beta is a solution of our differential equation provided we have alpha equals 3 and beta equals minus 5. So we've got a particular integral of x equals 3t minus 5. So the general solution of the differential equation is the particular integral plus the complementary function. So the general solution is x equals 3t minus 5 plus ae to the minus 2t plus be to the minus a half t. Now at the moment we haven't made any use at all of the initial conditions. So when t equals naught, we know that x has got to equal 3 and dx by dt has got to equal 2. We know the general solution is x equals 3t minus 5 plus ae to the minus 2t plus be to the minus a half t. Which straight away means that we know that dx by dt is 3 minus 2e minus 2a e to the minus 2t minus a half b e to the minus a half t. So putting t equals naught, we know that 3 has got to equal naught minus 5 plus a plus b. In other words, I know a plus b must be equal to 8. Now when t equals naught, we also know that dx by dt is equal to 2. So we've got 2 equals 3 minus 2a minus a half b. In other words, we have 2a plus a half b must equal 1. So we've got a pair of simultaneous equations for a and b. 
which have a solution a equals minus 2 and b equals 10. So the solution that we're looking for is x equals 3t minus 5 minus 2e to the minus 2 plus 10e to the minus a half t. Let's move on now to a second example. In an electrical circuit, the current I amps at time t seconds is modelled by the differential equation d2i dt squared plus 8di by dt plus ki equals 18e to the minus t, where k is a positive constant which depends on the capacitor in the circuit. In the case when k equals 16, we have to find the solution of the differential equation given that initially the current is 2 amps and di by dt is 0.5. So we've got the differential equation d2i dt squared plus 8di by dt plus 16i equals 18e to the minus t to solve. So again, we need to do this in two parts. First of all, we need to find the complementary function. So we need to solve the equation d2i dt squared plus 8di by dt plus 16i equals 0. The auxiliary equation for this is k squared plus 8k plus 16 equals 0. And that has a repeated root of k equals minus 4. So the complementary function must be i equals e to the minus 4t times by a t plus b. Now we now need to try and find a particular integral. Again, looking at the right-hand side, the right-hand side in this case is 18e to the minus t. So it would be quite sensible to start by looking at i equals alpha e to the minus t. So in other words, we're trying to get a solution that looks vaguely like the right-hand side. Now if we have i equals alpha e to the minus t, then di by dt is minus alpha e to the minus t, and d2 alpha d2i dt squared is alpha e to the minus t. So d2i dt squared plus 8di by dt plus 16i is going to be alpha e to the minus t plus 8 times minus alpha e to the minus t plus 16 alpha e to the minus t, which simplifies to 9 alpha e to the minus t. Now we really want this to equal 18 e to the minus t, which will be the case if alpha equals 2. So we've found a particular integral, and our particular integral is i equals 2 e to the minus t. So we have now found the complementary function and the particular integral for our differential equation. So the general solution of the differential equation is the particular integral plus the complementary function. So we've got a general solution of i equals 2e to the minus t plus a t plus b times e to the minus 4t. Now this means that di by dt is going to be minus 2e to the minus t plus then, now to differentiate a t plus b times e to the minus 4t we need to use the product rule Using the product rule, the derivative of a t plus b is just a, so we've got a times e to the minus 4t, plus then we've got a t plus b times by the derivative of e to the minus 4t, which is minus 4 e to the minus 4t. 
Now we know that the we are told that the initial conditions are a current of 2 amps and di by dt equals 0 0.5. So initial conditions means t equals 0. So when t equals 0, we've got i equals 2, which tells me that I have 2 equals 2 plus b. In other words, b must equal 0. I've also got when t equals 0, di by dt must be 0 0.5. So I've got 0 0.5 equals minus 2 plus a minus 4b. We know that b is 0, so that means that I now know that a must be 2.5. So my solution of my differential equation is i equals 2e to the minus t plus 2.5t e to the minus 4t. Now there's another part to this question. Given that the solution has only one stationary point, which occurs at time t, we must prove that t equals 5 minus 4e to the 3t over 20. Now, we know that i is equal to 2e to the minus t plus 2.5t e to the minus 4t. So differentiating and using the product rule again to differentiate 2.5t e to the minus 4t, we obtain di by dt is minus 2e to the minus t plus 2.5 e to the minus 4t minus 10t e to the minus 4t. For the stationary point, we need di by dt equals naught. So that means we have minus 2e to the minus big capital T plus 2.5e to the minus 4 capital T minus 10 capital T e to the minus 4 capital T must equal naught. If we times through by e to the 4t, that now gives me minus 2e to the 3t plus 2.5 minus 10t equals 0. Or in other words, we have 20t equals 5 minus 4e to the 3t. So we've got t equals 5 minus 4e to the 3t divided by 20 as required. Now we're told that t is a small positive number and we're asked to use a suitable iteration to find the value of t correct to two significant figures. And we will also need to show the um, state with reasons the nature of the stationary point. Well, if we use the iteration suggested by the formula that we've just shown, with a starting value of 0, because we're told that the value of t is a small positive number, so we're going to use the iteration t1 equals 0, tn plus 1 is 5 minus 4 lots of e to the 3 tn, all divided by 20. Then the first few terms in the iteration are t2 equals 0 0.05, and then t3 is 0 0.0176, etc. And if we use our calculator, we will see that the iteration converges to a value of 0 0.0307. So to three significant figures, we have t equals 0 0.031. Now we now need to work out whether this is a maximum or a minimum point. Now when t is 0, we know that i is 2 and di by dt is positive, which means that when t equals 0, the value of i is increasing. 
We also know that because i is 2e to the minus t plus 2.5te to the minus 4t, that as t tends to infinity, i tends to zero. Since there is only one stationary point on this curve, that must tell me that the stationary point is a maximum. Now maintaining this electrical circuit example, we've now got to consider the case when k equals 7 and find the general solution of the differential equation. So again, we need to find the complementary function of d2i dt squared plus 8di by dt plus 7i equals 18e to the minus t, the particular integral of this, and then obtain the general solution. So, complementary function first. We're trying to solve the equation d2i dt squared plus 8di by dt plus 7i equals 0. So the auxiliary equation is k squared plus 8k plus 7 equals 0, which has solutions k equals minus 1 or k equals minus 7. So the, complement, the complementary function is i equals a e to the minus t plus b e to the minus 7t. Now looking at the right hand side of our equation, it would be tempting to try a particular integral of the form i equals alpha e to the minus t. But if we reflect on what we've already done, we've seen that e to the minus t is already part of the complementary function. If it's part of the complementary function, if it's a term in the complementary function, then it can't be a particular integral. So what we're going to have to try in this case is something a little bit more sophisticated. We're going to have to try i equals alpha t e to the minus t. So we're going to try i equals alpha t e to the minus t. Now, if i equals to alpha t e to the minus t, then di by dt is alpha e to the minus t minus alpha t e to the minus t. That's using the product rule. And d2i dt squared is minus alpha e to the minus t minus alpha e to the minus t again plus alpha t e to the minus t which we can tidy up, of course, to say that it's alpha t e to the minus t minus 2 alpha e to the minus t. So, d2i dt squared plus 8di by dt plus 7i is going to be alpha t e to the minus t take away 2 alpha e to the minus t. That's my d2i dt squared term minus 8 lots of alpha t e to the minus t plus 8 lots of alpha e to the minus t. So there's my 8 di by dt term plus 7 alpha t e to the minus t. And if we simplify that, we see that all of the t e to the minus t terms cancel out and I am left with 6 alpha e to the minus t. Now this will equal 18 e to the minus t if I have alpha equals 3. So my particular integral for this equation is i equals 3t e to the minus t. My general solution is the particular integral plus the complementary function, 
So my general solution is going to be 3t e to the minus t plus a e to the minus t plus b e to the minus 7t. For our final example, we're going to consider the differential equation d2x dt squared plus 2dx by dt plus 26x equals 78 with initial conditions that when t equals naught, x is naught and dx by dt is 3. So, as in the previous examples, we start off by trying to find the complementary function which is the solution of the equation d2x dt squared plus 2dx by dt plus 26x equals 0. And this has auxiliary equation k squared plus 2k plus 26 equals 0. And the solutions of this quadratic equation are k equals minus 1 plus or minus 5i which means that the complementary function is x equals e to the minus t times by a cos 5t plus b sine 5t. Moving on to the particular solution, or the particular integral, Looking at the right-hand side, we can see that we simply have 78, so we've got a constant, so it makes sensible to try x equals alpha as our particular integral. And if we have x equals alpha, where alpha is a constant, then dx by dt is 0, and d2x dt squared equals 0. So d2x dt squared plus 2dx by dt plus 26x just becomes 0 plus 0 plus 26 alpha and that will equal 78 if alpha equals 3. So we have a particular integral or a particular solution of x equals 3. The general solution of the equation d2x dt squared plus 2dx by dt plus 26x equals 78 will be the particular solution plus the complementary function. In other words, it will be x equals 3 plus e to the minus t times by a cos 5t plus b sine 5t. We've now got to introduce the initial conditions. So we know what the general solution for x is, and using the product rule, we can obtain an expression for the general form for dx by dt. So when t equals naught, we know that x must equal naught, which means that 3 plus a must equal 0. And we also know that dx by dt must equal 3, which gives me minus a plus 5b equals 3. Putting those two together, we have a equals minus 3, and then b equals 0. So our solution to the differential equation, which satisfies the boundary conditions, is x equals 3 minus 3e to the minus t times cos 5t. Part B then says, find, first of all, find correct three decimal places the value of x when t equals 0 0.5. And that is simply a calculator job. And that gives me x equals 4.458. And then we're asked to describe what happens as t tends to infinity. Well, as t tends to infinity, we know that e to the minus t tends to 0, which means that e to the minus t cos t is going to tend to 0, and hence x is going to tend towards 3.